You've got into bounties, first few months, you've learned some tools, and you're just duplicating all the time. Is this really what bounties are? Is it really just everybody dupes? Reality check, no, but it's probably you. And I mean that in the nicest possible ways. It is totally normal in security to jump in and learn tools. It's how the education is built. It's almost a fundamental miss in the education piecing. It's almost a fundamental miss in the education today. The problem with the education is that it all focuses on technical vulnerabilities and in turn, the tools used to find them. Security in itself is actually how you take that knowledge and you make a business impact. When you're running tools like AEM Hacker, SSL Scan, Nikto, and the worst offender of them all, Nuclei, in their default settings with their default rules, even with some minor flag variations, but with their default rules, you are finding things that so many hackers before you have covered ground on. Nobody is running Nuclei against an eight-year-old bug bounty program with the default rules and finding new findings, at least not consistently. Maybe one in a million, they're going to do it. Whereas on the bounty side, we're going to be seeing reports that are duplicates for those, you know, sometimes up to 20 times a day, sometimes up to 100 times a day if the program launch is new. The duplicate rate of those is very, very high. The people that are making impact, the people that are making the money are the people that aren't doing that. They're going, here's an application. How do I go and create an impact around it? Or they're making their own ruling and their own, own tool set. People that are known to do common automation and have made their money on automation have done it by identifying things that others haven't. Unique subdomain takeover types, Route 53, EC2, both now patched, did not have very robust or publicly available tooling. People were crafting their own way forward into those and they were finding their own way to identify those, which allowed them to create an impact that wasn't available to, for lack of a better term, the masses or the crowd. If you're not doing that, learn the technical bug classes but don't report the technical bug classes what i mean by that is if you have a technical bug class try and craft your narrative try and craft your thinking around what it means for the business if you have an xss then you want to be able to write the impact of the xss what can you do what's it able to do if you have you know a business logic functionality can you outline, hey, per the documentation, this shouldn't be this way. This says one thing and it's doing it another. Maybe an unauthenticated user can do something. Maybe a normal user can perform something an administrator could do. And you find that by looking at documentation. That bespoke thinking is thinking like a hacker. That's going down the realm of understanding what you're looking at and making it do something that it shouldn't. Not taking a tool and having it do the work for you. Because if you're doing that, you're doing what so many others are doing and stopping at, and you are duplicating a lot. So how do you change your thinking to go from a tool-based mindset to an impact-based mindset where you expect to dupe less? And I think the best advice there is look at what competent hackers are doing. Pull up Naham Strick <laughs> Is it, I did this before. I am so sorry, Ben. I'm keeping it in. Pull up Naham's extreme. Look at the stream specifically when he's actively hacking and not doing recon. You'll see there's a difference between the recon stream with the tools to the active hacking ones. Look at the thought process. But then for him directly, even the recon based ones, look at how he's approaching the tools in his flow. He's not just running a tool and consuming the output. He's running the tool and he's thinking about the output to leverage to the next step. That thought process has a, a, a cadence to it that you want to emulate. You want to start to think along the lines of the complete picture of the application or the company that you're looking at. You don't want to just look for as many domains as you can. You want to look for the domains, how they interrelate. Do you see on every domain they have US East 1, right? That would indicate there's an AWS zone in their domain naming schema and you can search for all of the other AWS zones with your tools. So you're still using your tools, but you're applying thinking like a hacker of understanding how the business works to feed it back into that tool set. You're not just running a default word list and always hunting the next word list. You're creating your own word list around an asset space. And that's going to lead you to things that less people are trod on. And that's ultimately where you're going to duplicate less. So it's difficult advice to emulate but i would really encourage trying to break out of this thinking of 
I need this toolkit with this workflow and these word lists to these tools do this thing for me and these word lists create my foundation but this is how I enhance them and then creating notes and other things to enhance your thinking as you go on that journey. The best thing I did as a hacker is when I began, I started a wiki for myself and I've maintained it over the years. So I can go back and I can see the iterative part of my thinking, but I can also understand when I was learning a tool, how to interact and use it and where I apply it. Um, not just going, okay, this is my methodology. And this is why you won't see a methodology video from me. And that's not to say, is anything wrong with a methodology? The idea of those is to create the foundation of your thinking. The Jason Haddock's bug bounty methodology, which is the one I recommend the most, is a very good framework because it teaches you how to think. You stem off of that methodology and you take that thinking with the application that you're looking at to modify it for the situation you're approaching. The intention and why you'll see the methodology doesn't say use this tool, then use that tool. It says these tools do this and these tool, the tools do that is so you can create a methodology for the situation that you're in around the tools that you know. And that is why you'll see so many hackers using so many tools and always looking for other ways to do things because you continue to enhance your skill set and your thinking instead of just going okay i use GoBuster now and now i use ffuff you go I, I use mass dns for this situation i mean there are situations where maybe one tool rules a coup but you have to be flexible and you have to think about how you're going to cross apply it on that i wish you the very best in exploring further please don't run tools in their default configuration unless you want to dupe a lot um, and the same with your recon. And that's why a lot of the end advice here is around recon and recon specific thinking.